Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today we are back at Big Valley Antiques in Milroy, Pennsylvania. We haven't been here since before Christmas. Um, we are in the, where are we? We're in the middle of February, almost at the end of February. Crazy how time flies. So she is a big one for sure. <laughs> We're going to get in here, see if we can't find anything. Um, I, you know, we've been here before, however, I haven't been here since really the whole interest in uh, pottery has really developed. So I'm, I'm always excited to go back to a place when you have a new interest um, to see if things kind of stand out maybe more than they have before. So without further ado, let's get inside, guys. Alrighty guys, here we are right off the bat. Didn't I just say we were looking for Weller in Roseville and here I am buying an Anarcho turtle planter. <laughs> I mean, he's really cute. Look at the color. It's $5. I can't pass that cuteness up for just $5. Heck yeah, we're going to get him, but we are still going to keep a lookout for those higher end ceramic and pottery pieces. Here, of course, is one of those. This is, it appeared to me to be an upon uh, vase, very Art Nouveau with those handles on there. Yes, of course it is Nippon hand painted. Um, I don't know. It The price was $50, which is certainly not a bad price, especially for in its condition. I will say this. I have a tendency to prefer when the painting isn't so trimmed in gold. Um, I think that it adds a little bit more organicness to the painting itself. Now, here we are find, finding some antique Fenton. It is a blue opalescent. And right here on one of the ribbons there, you are seeing there is a chip to it. I was checking out to see if there was some other damage. It's priced at $35. I was very interested in picking it up because I had not had this pattern before. Unfortunately, it was a pretty pronounced chip to me. Like I spotted it immediately. So I elected to leave that piece behind. Um, here, again, we are in, in a booth. Very, um, It's got a lot of stuff in it. Let's call it that. Um, and what we are seeing, of course, is two Roseville pieces. So I had to take my time trying to get in here. It's always a fun adventure um, when there's stuff on the floor trying to get to something. Yeah, I'm kind of judging it here by the thinness of the handles as well as the paint application. Um, this one is priced at $69, which there did not appear to be any condition issues on the piece. I did decide to leave it behind because I would have liked it to have been a little bit cheaper. Here we are seeing the same pattern. I believe this is the dogwood. Um, these are console bowls, so these would have been part of a set with matching candlesticks. This one was priced at just... $59, $10 cheaper. And I thought, hmm, I want to check this one out. It appeared to be in really good condition. However, there was a repair spot back here on one of the tips. Um, it did appear that they put in some kind of compound. So I said, drats, and I left it behind. Now here we are seeing a vintage paper mache black cat candy bucket. Um, I was really trying to judge if it was an original or if it was a reproduction. It was really throwing me off. And then I saw the tag on the side. This is in fact one of the reproductions from 1999. It is still vintage, but it is not an original antique one. Here we are in our next booth. This booth was super jam-packed with a lot of things. And of course, the thing that stuck out most to me was the opalescent. Um, there was quite a bit to kind of move around, and I was trying to capture it all live for you here. Um, again, wanting to kind of really feel like we're, we're really shopping together. I think we're achieving that, even though I was risking breaking everything. <laughs> I did have to turn the camera off to get this out. Um, it's a beautiful opalescent rose bowl here, footed rose bowl. I thought it was pretty. It was simple. It is elegant. It is timeless. It is going to go year round. Um, so I did elect to go ahead and pick the one up. They were priced at $9.99 each, which I thought was very reasonable. Um, it is, in fact, an antique piece of glass. And then I was like, mm, do I want to get one or do I want to get both? Hmm. I don't know. I decided to go ahead and get both. And with that, we picked up our basket. The curse is broken, folks. I think getting the set is going to be um, a lot better of a sell than just selling one individually. As I was headed back, I did see this beautiful Fenton Epern. Um, it did say, be careful. 
<laughs> don't touch it. Those do fall out. Um, it was priced at only one twenty-five, which I thought was very reasonable. Obviously, it is in an aqua or colonial blue, if you would prefer. Um, very elegant, very pretty. I didn't know if I would want to really ship all of those pieces together. Now, here we are seeing an antique photo album. I am loving that beveled glass mirror piece on the front. Um, the latch does appear to be attached. There is photos in. The binding seems tight. Yes, there is some damage to the velveteen on it. However, um, I loved the color and I thought that the the loss of the velvet kind of added to it. But unfortunately, at 148, it wasn't where I would want it to be for resale. Now, it did include, of course, its stand. The stand was missing its little um, knob here on the front to pull that out. So that way you could have, you know, your letters or your pens tucked away inside. But overall, I thought it was a beautiful piece. Talking about a beautiful piece, we are seeing this German cuckoo clock. Um, it, it, like the whole compound, the estate is there. We've got the dogs down there. Of course, we've got the people up top. It was priced at $450. Oh, pardon me, Swiss. Um, you know, I think that's great for a collector. Unfortunately, as a reseller, it's certainly not at a price point where I would want it to be for resale. And just below that were these little wooden houses. These are, in fact, music boxes. And I thought how cute it would be if you had the cuckoo clock and then maybe a little wall shelf and had these placed around it like you had your own little wall village. Now, here we are finding a little hall piece. It was priced at just $10. And I thought, you know what? It's $10. I'm not just going to buy for myself. I typically am not overly attracted to the whole pieces because of the color palette. And then initially I thought there was a small chip on it. No, it's just a slipping of the glaze. In other words, the glaze did not coat that part of the ceramic. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. I know that there are people that would say, well, then I don't want it. And that's fine. Um, you know, I certainly thought at $10, it would definitely have some resale value on it, even with the slipping. Now, this vendor does obviously focus a lot on jewelry, and I saw this beautiful Celtic knot brooch here. There is a little cloudiness down there to the bottom right that you're seeing, but I didn't mind. They do not glow, um, which is unfortunately, um, unfortunately, it's unfortunately unfortunate. <laughs> we'll go with that. But I think it's an absolutely beautiful piece. It is definitely a statement piece, and it will definitely catch attention, especially if you were to put that on to black. Um, St. Patty's Day is coming up, so obviously we did to go, go ahead and pick that piece up. Next up, we are seeing this is a made in occupied uh, Japan. I don't know. All of a sudden, I have this fascination with this. I really can't talk this morning, can I? This fascination with these anthropomorphic frogs. Um, they're a little disturbing, a little creepy, but you know, hey, we did decide to get him too. And then I thought I broke this. It immediately. <laughs> It is this lithograph, it is a tin uh, woodpecker here. It seems that the tag was keeping him from driving everybody insane. He obviously is working. Um, he was priced at $66 with 10% off, which I thought would be excellent for a collector. Obviously, there is some rust and some pitting. However, I think it adds to his charm. Um, sometimes I have found that when a piece looks so spotless, it almost look you're like, is that a reproduction? But I did decide to leave him behind because I was not about to listen to that thing. Now here, of course, we are seeing some, what, Roseville. That is right. This is the Donatella pattern. Um, I, mm, I like this pattern, but I'm not overly in love with this pattern. This one is priced at $75, um, which I think is very fair for it, I actually prefer their Florentine pattern over this one. Now, here we have seen some um, Bosom uh, chalkware in the past. This is an English chalkware. Obviously, it is highly, highly detailed. And I was like, wow, you really look like Charlton Heston, though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that what supposed to be? Um, I think he's like Turkish or Arabian, and I'm judging that by his shield pattern there. Um, that is a patent date down there of 1966 or 67. 
Um, beautiful, vibrant colors. There is some chipping with it, but again, on the chalkware pieces, it's kind of to be expected. Nineteen dollars, I think, is a great deal. Um, but it was very, it, it was so specific, um, given his costuming. Um, so I did decide to go ahead and leave him behind. Now, this vendor's booth is always wonderful. There's always beautiful things to see here. We've got Mr. Toodles, the creamer, the poodle light. I've seen these here b before. I'm surprised somebody hasn't picked them up yet. Um, but throughout this vendor's booth, you're really going to see some beautiful displays. Um, everything is really pulled together so far as color groupings. And I do appreciate that. Uh, it does make it a little bit easier for me to shop. Um, so yeah, and I love all of the use of kind of like the barn wood here in the shelves put it up. It really creates, again, an ambiance. Now I do see this beautiful little cobalt and they have it kind of like inkwell question mark. Um, that's a good, you know, it could be an inkwell. I also thought maybe it could be like a little mini Van Briggle vase. A lot of the uh, pottery companies did do small versions of their larger pieces. So I couldn't identify the maker. He elected to leave it behind. Here we've got a little sardine kit. God, could you imagine the smell of this? Oh. <laughs> Gross. It's priced at $32, again, very Victorian. And I don't know how I feel about letting fish sit out on the table. <laughs> Goodness. Here we've got a little Fenton hob, yeah, hobnail. Um, and next to it was this beautiful, and I noticed they had it marked as sarsaparilla, which I thought was really interesting. It is $38. It's called Mother and Daughter. Um, it is a two-faced, two-faced, two-sided. <laughs> well, she is technically two-faced. Um, you see it's a different face on either side. I couldn't make out the sarsaparilla mark, but... You know, I actually, this vendor I know knows their things. So I was like, okay, okay, okay. But Sasparilla bought a lot of very Art Deco uh, molds legitimately and reproduced them in the 80s. So um, I thought that was really cool. I'd never seen that piece before. Here we've got a little Westmoreland in the amber glass. Priced at $38, I thought was very reasonable. I, again, have got a much bigger appreciation for the amber glass. Um, again, that amber with the milk glass and the clear glass, that's certainly something. I think it creates a very bohemian look. Got some little Russian nesting dolls. I don't know a whole lot about them, therefore I did decide to leave them behind. I think that the price is, it seems to be the going rate for the nesting dolls. Now here we've got some beautiful Weller. It's a very unusual shape to it. At first I thought that it was a pedestal for a jardinier, but it it's not, it, it, it is a, a vase itself. It is priced at 185 um, in the apple orchard, but I, I just, mm, yeah, I don't know. I did decide to leave that one behind. It's a little pricey for me for resale. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we are now headed upstairs. And the first place that I wanted to stop was this booth. This, you guys, is Caroline's booth. Caroline does an absolutely amazing job at displaying her items. I love the chandelier. The lighting is absolutely, I mean, look at this. You know she took some time, some effort, and some thought to put together this beautiful green and green glass and custard glass display for St. Patrick's Day. We've got a little Ellie Smith here. I loved it. It was so jeweled, and that lighting just added to it. That here we're seeing this gorgeous swung vase. Oh my goodness! It is emerald green. It's beautiful. It's only $20. It, we're definitely getting it. Now, this is an Ellie Smith. I will say Ellie Smith is second only to Viking glass. I mean, look how, oh my goodness. Don't you love that color? Look at that sparkle. Goodness, goodness. So, of course, I wanted to get very up close and personal with this display. I thought it was reading beautifully on camera. Um, so I kind of really wanted to just, again, share that experience with you guys. I thought it was beautiful. I loved how the colors were playing, the lights. Um, it was just gorgeous. I loved it. And I really think that this shows, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's green glass. But yeah, but you can do a lot with it, especially when you pull it all together in the different shades and hues. Of course, we are seeing a very large 
uh, clear glass swung vase. I did leave it behind. I left it behind. No, <laughs> uh, we got some hazel atlas cobalt there. Some redware. We've got that little elephant and the bowling ball and pins. Here we're seeing some little kitsch kind of pulled together, almost like it is a kitchen display. I am seeing some salty pep, salty and peppy, salt and pepper shakers. We've got the little kittens here with the Google eyes. Um, these I thought were really cute. Only twelve dollars. I'd never seen the cats before. The eyes were what was really selling me on them. I was like, "Do you work?" And of course not. Why would they work? I mean, hey, you don't know until you try, though, right, folks? So there was some damage. I don't know what they used to create. There was like these textured stripes and it looked like those had gotten knocked off. Um, so I did see another set up here. Now this one had green eyes, which I actually much preferred. Um, unfortunately, the black cat here is missing his noisemaker. They were priced at $10 and I was like, you know what? Um, I'm okay with the noisemaker being missing because I think that they make such adorable, kitschy figural pieces, especially those green Google eyes. So I did decide to go ahead and pick them up. Talking about something that was really cute and kitschy was this trio of little Pomeranians. I think they're Pomeranians. Or are they Shih Tzus? I don't know. These are actually from 1990. And again, as disturbing as it is to say, they are now, in fact, vintage. I thought they were super cute and would make a great addition to anybody's display. So we did get those. Now talk about something that's um, interesting is like this blue. I didn't know if it was lucite or if it was just a... Um, uh, like a plastic composite it is a mushroom with these little dwarves and the shade had mushrooms on it. They were at a little wishing well here. I thought initially the price was off and I was like, well, maybe it's somewhere else on here. Maybe they don't want to sell it because it's so amazing. Now, it does appear that they are missing something. Does appear that the lamp itself is marked at $50. Um, I'm not going to get it just because the shipping on it, but I, I had to show it. I mean, why not? Okay, so this was an absolutely, utterly amazing find. This is the Master Crafters um, clock. I, you know, other than calling it the bird swing clock, I don't know that there's really a, a technical name for it. Um, it appeared to be an overall okay condition. I about lost the cage there. Now, there are two rungs that are broken out of the bird's cage. One is taped, one is missing. There was a sticker on top that said working as is. And I was like, but what is the as is? Is it the damage to the cage? And I'm trying to identify anything that might be wrong with it. And I'm like, let me try to plug it in. So the you can see the second hand is turning. The bird, in fact, is meant to rock back and forth. Now, there is a light switch here on this side. I wanted to see if that worked. I was like, well, let's see. Okay, so the, it's not lighting up. However, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take a risk on this. And I'm glad I did because it does, in fact, work. Obviously, I had to get a replacement bulb. Now, I didn't have the cage on here because I was repairing that one broken um, cage wire thing. <laughs> But here it, oh, here we go. I am showing it. So I am missing the one, but, and I'm keeping this because I love it so much. It's beautiful, very deco y. Now, here I am going to show you the remainder of the vendor's booth. I absolutely loved it here. Um, it very much reminded me of my grandfather's downstairs, you know, in my grandparents' house, you know, my grandmother had upstairs and my grandfather down, had downstairs. Um, and this very much is indicative of, of the downstairs for my grandparents' home. Um, even the smell. It, it was nearly identical to my grandfather's kind of workspace, the garage, the pool table. There was a bar and uh, I kind of lingered here just because it was bringing back great memories. So, you know, I didn't find anything else, but that one thing um, and being reminded of all those memories was well worth it. Now here you guys, we are seeing a beautiful mid-century display. I, we've seen this before. Um, we've got some Cobra candle snakes here. Oh, ah, watch out, boo, they're gonna get you. <laughs> 
But we've got some great items. Um, I'm never disappointed by the pull together the display of it. Now, this was really interesting. It is a small little jack and pulpit. It is a pink depression glass. I love the absolute detail on this. I'm not used to seeing um, so much detail in the jack and the pulpit. It's typically more of an abstract. Here you're actually seeing the petal designs on the back. It's continued up through the, the point on top of the flower there. Like it's very much meant to look like a flower. And it was priced at only $14. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get you little one. I think it's cute. Um, again, it's highly detailed. I was shocked at how highly detailed it was. So I was pleasantly surprised by that piece. Now here we are going to see some other mid-century goodness. These are like a pop metal or cast iron, not a cast iron, Michael. <laughs> They're metal. They're metal roosters. Um, I love the very Art Nouveau, the, like the movement to all of the feathers, um, the intricacy of it. They were priced as a pair at $35, which I thought was very fair. I didn't know, you know, I was very much attracted to the subject matter, but I was keeping in mind, are other people going to, and I'm certainly sure that there are other people out there that are going to see them and love them. Um, but I was a little unsure. They were a little difficult to kind of figure out which way they were trying to stand. Here we go. We figured it out all by myself, folks, all by myself. But I thought that they made great figural pieces, especially if they were on like a, bo a bookshelf. Now, look at this beauty, this Costa Boda. It's absolutely stunning. Isn't she beautiful? I wish it was in a different color, truth be told. Um, it's kind of like an ambery, a chocolatey brown. $69, which is very reasonable for this piece, I, I think, in my opinion. And here we are seeing some more art glass. This is absolutely beautiful. I love these pieces. It, it They are like a faceted. Um, I honestly, I've had two pieces of this before and it hasn't done well for me, unfortunately. Um, so I did decide to go ahead and leave this one behind. I love them. Um, it's almost like an adult kaleidoscope when you look through them. And I was really trying to capture that because there is a lot of artistry behind the piece. This is a good, solid solid piece of glass. Um, and I think it's kind of underappreciated, truth be told. I think people look at it and they think, oh, it's okay. Um, but there is an artistry to it that you really only see once you have it in real life. Again, some great mid-century. We've got some little sand art down here. I love this. It's not for everybody. I will say that it's a bit abstract, but I think that if you're a big mid-century fan, there's certainly something to be said for having a piece like this because it can be conversational. It very much um, evokes, hopefully, some imaginative thought to you, almost like looking at a cloud, if you will. Now, talk about imaginative thought. This actually can give you some imaginative play. The piece is separate. It is this wooden sculpture, very mid-century. It's priced at $29. Um, you can kind of move it around. The ball is not attached, okay? So you can move the piece around to kind of create your own sculpture within the sculpture, which I thought was really interesting. And um, if you're not careful, the price tags will fall off of things. Don't worry, I picked it back up and put it on there. Um, I think that it's really interesting. Now, the vendor also has some great taste in music. Um, Fleetwood Mac, Rumors, good album, good album. Not my favorite by them. Joanne Jett, Love. Molly Hatchet, of course. Look at Death Leopard, Grateful Dead, The Beatles. We've got some David Bowie, of course. We've got Ram and Michael Wham, Wham, <laughs> Wham. and Michael Jackson. Um, great coffee table books here, the Art Deco style. It was really interesting that I saw the Art Deco uh, in with the mid-century, but I love um, some some different, oh, did you see that Egyptian revival, that brooch, that scarab there? I like the fact that there's an appreciation um, for more than one design style. Um, you know, there's always room for more than one, folks. So we've got one. We've also got a second one here, a little bit larger, not as big. Um, they both kind of focused more on art than anything else, which, I mean, is great. I think that you can learn. A, oh, we've got some architecture there, but I kind of wanted it to be more like of um, a reference guide, if you will. 
Now here we are having a sale. So of course this immediately caught my attention. And the thing that really stood out to me was this inkwell. Um, vendor has it as our deco. I, it's, it's to me, the figural piece on it. The actual tray is very deco. However, the finishing as well as the girl make it very nouveau. So it's almost like it's a transitional piece. Obviously the glass insert for the inkwell is missing. Um, there is some paint loss and I was like, you know what? That's okay. I think it's really unique at price of only $32 with 20% off. Off, heck yeah, I'm going to pick this up. Um, I think it makes a, a great display item, perfect for a trinket tray or if you have small brooches and jewelry, something to kind of put on there. Great mid-century lamp. Look at that groovy um, a lampshade to it. I was really tempted. I thought the price was fantastic. Um, unfortunately, it was like the size of the shade would really kind of be cost prohibitive for shipping. Here we've got some great sugar and creamer with those red lucite handles. Love it, love it, love it. The last piece, you guys, that we find is this stunner of a bowl. That's right. It's clear glass. And I'm saying if you're going to do clear glass, then do it up, folks. I don't think there's anything boring about this one. And it's only $18. All right, guys, that is it. We're going to wrap it up outside. Woo. Well, guys, there we have it. Another exciting adventure at Big Valley Antiques here in... in um, Milroy. We're in Milroy, Pennsylvania. I didn't look it up. I remembered it all by myself. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I hope that you had a good time today. I really, if you have the opportunity, do recommend coming here, checking it out. It's a very friendly store. Everybody's very kind and gracious. You obviously are going to find a veras, a veras, a veras, a veras array. <laughs> A vast array of different kinds of stuff here. Was that an A vast array of different man. So anyhow, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I hope that you guys had a good time. I think that we got some great stuff. I'm super excited to see what you guys think about it. Um, what was my favorite piece? What is my favorite piece? Is it the clock? Is it the frog? Is it the brooch? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what's your favorite piece. So anyhow, guys, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.